In our first Rhino exercise, you'll get some practice with moving and rotating geometry and learn to use viewports to understand where things are in virtual space. These fundamental skills will help you use Rhino more efficiently going forward. In this exercise, the Parthenon has fallen down and it's your job to rebuild it. The blue lines show where the parts need to go so that you can follow along on your own computer you'll want to download the exercise file from the link in the description. In case it's helpful to know this, I'm working with Rhino 8 on a PC. No worries if you're using a Mac, the interface is very similar across platforms. In Rhino, there are three ways of moving the camera. The first is to hold the right mouse button and drag to orbit, or we can pan by holding shift and holding the right mouse button down, or we can zoom and my favorite way of zooming is to hold control, hold the right mouse button down, and then move the mouse forward or backward. Or if you have a mouse with a wheel in the center, you can just roll that forward or backward to zoom. It's also helpful to know how to put something in the center of your orbit. And you can do that by selecting an item and then type ZS for zoom selected. Or if you want to say, see how this pillar relates to the platform, we can select the platform, hold shift, uh, click on the pillar to add it to our selection and then type in ZS. Now, if we look in the top left corner, we'll see uh, that uh, we're right now in the perspective window. And so we can change this to the four viewport layout by double clicking on perspective. In the four viewport layout, we have also the top, front, and right viewports in addition to perspective. And we can change the shading mode uh, in any of these uh, windows by just going to the viewport name and right click on it. And you could set it to wireframe, for example, which gives this um, transparent representation of the form. Or if we change it to ghosted, that's more of a translucent representation or um, rendered will give us more of a shadowed um, kind of uh, opaque representation of the form without the wireframe. Uh, generally, I tend to work in shaded most, uh, but there are occasions where it's useful to switch. Something else I should mention about the four viewport layout is that you can change the size of each of these viewports if you want to by just dragging around um, the dividers between them. And if you ever want to switch back to the standard um, even quadrants, uh, you can just come up under the standard menu here and double click on the four viewport button. And uh, we can also get back then to our full screen perspective window by just double clicking on the, the viewport name. The first method I'll show you for moving items in Rhino is to use the gumball. And so if we select an item, uh, right now the gumball is, is turned on already, so that's why we see the widget come up. Um, if you don't see the widget, it means you need to enable gumball by just clicking on this button down here. And while we're looking at the lower menu, I'll also mention that we don't need ortho and we don't need grid snap, so let's turn those off. So um, now the gumball is turned on. If we grab one of these arcs, it will let us to rotate an object. Uh, if we say use the red arc, it's going to rotate along a different axis. Uh, if we use one of the arrows, it will move the object along a particular axis. Or you can see that uh, little like um, window pane thing right there. If we grab that, it will move the item along a plane. So right now we're moving along the XY plane. If we orbit down to the side, you'll see that a different one of those window pane things popped up and we can use that to move the item now along the ZY plane. We can also use the gumball to scale an item. So if I grab this, it will scale one dimensionally, uh, which would distort the form. Or if we hold shift and drag, it will scale the item uniformly. Uh, we don't actually need to change the scale of any of these items, but just so that you know, um, that's how you can do it. And if we, come down to the bottom where the gumball um, menu button is and right click on it. Right now, uh, it's set to auto reset, which means that every time we click away from the object and then click back, 
the uh, gumball is going to have realigned itself with the grid. There are some times when it's actually helpful to be able to change uh, the gumball to line up more with the object. And so if we, let's turn this off. And what I want to do is rotate the gumball without affecting the object. And so I can do that by just double clicking on that handle. And then I can set this to be so that the arrow is lined up with the form. Let's run through a quick example together so that you can see how the gumball could be used to move the pillar into place. And so we'll go to the top viewport and get it to be fairly well lined up with the grid from that vantage point. And then we'll go to the right viewport and check it there. And that's pretty close. Let's go ahead and stand it up. And um, uh, one trick for rotating in 90 degree increments, you can see like, you know, it moves about freely right now. If we hold shift, it will toggle ortho and turn it on to allow it to snap um, 90 degrees up. So now we can go so that we're in perspective looking down on the form and move it down in space some. And now I'll, I'll type in ZS to zoom selected. Scoot it over a bit. And there are more precise ways of moving things around. I'll show you some methods toward the end of the tutorial. Uh, but for now, it would be good to go ahead and pause the video and uh, move some items into place so that you get familiar with how the gumball works. Let's talk about a few other commands that will be useful in this exercise. The first is Control Z, which is just undo. And we could even step back several steps if we need to. Or if we press Control Y, it will repeat the last actions we took uh, that we just undid. Or we can copy paste with Control C, Control V, and then we could drag this over. Another way of copy pasting is to select an item and then press, uh, you know, click and drag on an, on an arrow and just tap the Alt key. And um, we can also uh, isolate things in different ways. So if we want to only see this pillar and the blue outline, we can. Uh, select that, pill that pillar and type in invert and hide. Or uh, if we want to bring everything back, show. Or we can select the pillar, invert and lock. And that just makes it so that we can't click on these items. If we want to just make it so that we don't disturb the other parts as we're moving this into place, lock can be helpful for that. And as you probably guessed, we can just type in unlock uh, to restore um, everything to its previous state. And um, so um, you could accidentally initiate a command when you're working in Rhino and then be confused about why the gumball isn't working anymore. So if we were to, for example, accidentally push control G uh, right now in the command line, it says select objects to group. So Rhino's, Rhino wants us to select two items and press enter. And those things are now grouped together. Um, but um, suppose that that, <laughs> that wasn't a command we wanted to run. Um, we, um, we could just escape out of the command. So just, just know if you get stuck, take a look up in the command line and see if something is running. Um, we talked already about turning off these menu buttons at the bottom. Uh, I should also mention, though, that we can toggle the grid by pressing F7. So if we want to hide it or show it in any of the viewports, we can do that, F7. And I want to mention a couple of methods for selecting items, too. So if we want to use the lasso to select things, we can drag from left to right to select only those things that fall totally within the lasso. Or if we drag from right to left, it'll select everything that the lasso touches. And so that's useful if you want to, say, grab this, um, this little box in a hurry. You can just do that. Um, we can also uh, select an item, as we talked about before, and we can add to that selection by just holding Shift. 
or we can hold control to deselect anything from our current selection set. Now that you've had a chance to practice with the gumball, you've seen that it's a great way to quickly move something where you want it, uh, but it's not super accurate. And so um, there are some more advanced methods that I think you'll find useful. Uh, let's cover first the move command. And so I'll select this item, I'll invert the selection and hide so that we're only looking at this box. And then we'll select the box and um, let's turn on our object snaps. So down at the bottom uh, on this menu, I'll click O snap. And we wanna have the end snap turned on. We're, we'll also use the intersection snap. And I guess that's good for now. So we'll go ahead and type in move. M-O-V-E, and the point we want to move from is the bottom left corner, and the point we want to move to is right there. And uh, so now we have that corner lined up, but we need to rotate it into place. And so we can use the rotate command, also using the snap, and we'll snap to the end. And it's asking in the command line for the angle or the first reference point. So we'll go out here to the end and then we'll just rotate it over and snap it that way. Uh, you should be aware though that um, the rotate command works um, in conjunction with the, um, the XY plane. So if you're trying to rotate something up in space this way, you would need to change to uh, say the front viewport possibly. Um, let me show you an example. So I'll bring everything back, show. So if we want to rotate this item um, up this way, we would need to do it from this vantage point. So I'll use the end snap and I'll come to this end and then we can rotate up. And uh, I told you before that we can hold shift to temporarily turn ortho on. So that could be a useful way of snapping now to uh, be in line with the grid. And we could do the rotate command again from the right viewport. From the end to the end. You could also, you could also use center uh, because the object is, um, has a circular top and bottom. And I'll hold shift. Uh, to make it vertical. Another command that I find really helpful for moving complex objects into place is orient three point. So let's select this item, we'll invert the selection, we'll hide this stuff, and then we'll move this. Let's get it sort of close to where it needs to be. Uh, blue, move that up, rotate it this way. You don't have to do this step. It just makes it a little bit easier to see what you're doing. Um, yeah, that should work. So now um, orient three points. And uh, you can see what I'm doing up here in the command line. It's going to ask me a couple of questions. The object I want to orient is this. So now I'll press enter. Reference point one. Let's go from bottom left, bottom right to top. So again, um, you know, we want to put it up here, bottom left. I have my end snap on, by the way. So I have my object snap turned on and I have my end snap enabled. Bottom left, bottom right, top. And that's it. At this point, you have all the information you need to be able to reassemble the Parthenon using some of the more advanced move methods that we just covered, including the move command rotate and orient three point along with the copy paste command uh, should help to speed up the process quite a lot.